Hello, my name is Antonio Galladay and I represent the Grand Boulevard Prevention Services. Uh, today I have my guest here, Lamont Robinson. How are you feeling today? Sir? I feel great, Antonio. I'm glad to be with you, here with you this evening. All right, well, I just want to uh, talk about prevention of uh, violence in the community and things we can do to uh, ensure the safety of our youth in our uh, area. So, um, how long have you had your organization? You work for Allstate, correct? That's correct. I've been an Allstate agent, Antonio, for 10 years, and uh, it's interesting, this past Saturday, made my 10-year anniversary. Congratulations. Thank that. you. Thank you very much. All right, so um, what is your community involvement, job description, basically? Uh, Antonio, as a business owner at 51st in Indiana, uh, I understand that there are a lot of issues that um, that uh, we're having in our communities. And so number one is uh, to be a business owner that cares about the community, mm -hmm. that's bringing a viable business to the community is number one. Uh, number two, I'm also the Associate Director of the Capital League Institute of Chicago. Uh, that program mentors high school students mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they not only go to school but they matriculate through college successfully. Uh, we send these young men overseas in their junior year to expose them to uh, other cultures. Okay. Um, we also do a college tour that we'll be leaving out um, this Saturday to attend schools in the, the East, um, which will be the name of Hugh Cornell University, um, as well as Rutgers. That's uh, very good. Um, so what specific things do you think would uh, empower our youth or prevent violence in our area to make things a lot better? Our community. Antonio, we need opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, we need um, we need jobs and exposure. And so, what I'm doing as a business owner is um, working with uh, my company to hire uh, youth during the academic school year. Not just the summer, Antonio, but we need students to have jobs during the academic school year. So, I'm working with my company uh, to hopefully have students from DuSable High School that will intern in my office to learn entrepreneurship, uh, business skills, um, as well as um, just to how to uh, have soft skills, how to be able to interact with people. Uh, those are important skills. And if I can expose students to a better life, uh, entrepreneurship, I think those things, um, if we can do those couple things, Antonio, I think that we'll push the needle um, for the, the, the different plights that are going on in our neighborhood. I think, again, Antonio, youth need exposure. Exposure, I definitely agree. Um, how do you feel about today's youth and, uh, oh, well, actually, we actually have a caller on the air. One second. Hey, good evening to you, gentlemen. How are you? I am fine. How are you? Great. And, uh, and to your guest there. I'm great. Thank you for calling in. Yes, all right. So, um, could, could you talk a little bit more about um, your your business in the community and what are some of the, um, I guess, if you have challenges to being a business owner, what are some of the ways that um, the community, local community, could work with you to deal with those challenges and um, talk about some of your success stories as a business owner in the community? You know, and I, I appreciate you calling in. As a business owner uh, in Bronzeville, in the Grand Boulevard area, also we crisscross at Washington Park, one of the challenges that I have early on, um, and I've been uh, at my location for five years, and that is, uh, you know, selling drugs, uh, selling cigarettes in front of my business. Uh, that's one of the, the, the number one struggles that I have. And I appreciate you calling in because I think that a lot of people don't realize that you have to be able to talk to um, folks in your area. You can't just live in a house and or run a business and not talk to the people that are around your business and or your home. And so I had to have several conversations with the gentlemen that were selling loose cigarettes and drugs in front of my establishment to let them know that, hey, look, I'm a part of the fabric of the community. I understand that you're running your business, but I'm running a business as well. And the only thing that I can ask is that you don't lauder and stand in front of my business. And uh, be because of that relationship and, and talking to these gentlemen, I've been able to keep them at bay. Um, one of the first things that happened to me uh, when I first moved into the neighborhood, Antonio, is that uh, gentlemen uh, uh, continued to break into the building. Oh, really? And I use that same concept, Antonio, is to find out who continued to break into the building. 
and have a conversation with them to say, hey, look, I'm a business owner. I look like you. I bring a viable business to the neighborhood. And I want to be able to succeed and be successful. But I can't do that, Antonio, if you continue to break into the business. And so, you know, those are the things that I think that we have to be able to communicate as a community. Uh, we can't just point the blame. Um, we can't um, uh, think that folks are better than us, Antonio. We have to look somebody eye to eye and say, hey, look, what are the issues that you're having and how can I assist you as a business owner? I definitely agree with that. Uh, we're going to hold that thought for one second. We have another caller. Yes, good evening. Two good evening. quick uh, uh, suggestions. First one is that all people are made to go to college. Some need to go to trade schools like they want to go. Because yes. you make plenty of money in a construction company, yes. you know. Then we can't get the jobs. When we do go to the schools, I'm going to tell you why. Every four years, we go to vote to pick our alderman and the mayor and so far we have a bunch of african-american and a bunch of hispanic mayor uh, not mayor but alderman and nothing has changed you have all that construction going on downtown right now yes you have 70 claims downtown and not one hispanic and not one african-american construction company owns any of it oh you see you're token people but that's all you see and i want to know why that is you know what I, I got a suggestion i gotta just know we, we start looking into who we vote for and all them people every year give you a few bucks go go stand out there in the cold with a sign and say hey man vote for me i'm gonna take care of you and nothing's taken care of chicago also i gotta say this Chicago has been run like that for years, and it comes from the top. He's the man. you got to get him out, and maybe and some of those other people, and maybe we'll have a great country again. Thank you. That was a, that was a very great statement. Do you have anything to add to that? You know, Antonio, I, I would agree. I, I, as I mentioned, I'm the associate director of the Catholic Institute of Chicago, which is the College Preparedness Program. Uh, but Antonio, I'm also a college professor at Harold Washington College. But I also understand that we need to have trades in schools, Antonio. Uh, we used to have them in, at, at Lindblom and other schools at CVS. Mm -hmm. And those programs are not there anymore. And uh, I think it's very dispiriting when I go out uh, in my community, uh, in the Bronzeville neighborhood, or even if I'm downtown and I pass job sites, and I don't see people that look like you and I, Antonio. That's, that's a problem. And I'm glad that the, the caller uh, mentioned that uh, because we need to do a better job of making sure our elected officials understand that, that we need jobs, we need trade schools, and that uh, when these companies are building, if you look in Chicago, they are, they are building uh, buildings overnight. Right. Uh, but these job sites, Antonio, do not have folks that look like you and I, and that's a problem. And how we change that is, and what the caller is saying, and I agree with 100%, is that we put political officials in office that understand that, that understand that we need jobs, that understand that we need trade schools in our communities. Definitely. Uh, we also have another caller on the air. Caller? Yes, I'd like to talk to the guest. Um, I heard what you said about how you would talk to people when they were selling drugs or loose cigarettes outside your business, and I applaud you for that because you decided to talk to them instead of talking against them by calling the authorities. And I'm just wondering, is that something that we can adopt in Chicago as a, as a way to try and heal the community and try and fix what's wrong? Yes. I, I think that we cannot police ourselves out of issues, that we have to talk to these young men and let them know that I'm with you. I look like you. I care about you. I love you. But you can't do the things that you're doing. Um, and also be able to assist them with programs that um, will help them to be able to be um, a good member of society. They want help. They want jobs. They want people to respect them. And we can't always rely on the police to be able to change the trajectory of our community. 
we have to change the trajectory of our community. As taxpayers, as business owners, we have to stand up and be able to take over our community. And that's what we're doing on Saturday, and I hope that we'll be able to, 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 to get to that, Antonio. Uh, can you speak a little bit more about Saturday for me, please? Uh, on Saturday, uh, at uh, the corner of 51st and Indiana, we're doing a Take Over Our Community event. And this event is to let the residents know that we are here to stand and not allow our community to be taken over by drugs and violence. Mm -hmm. uh, the business owners in the communities have come together. Uh, the aldermen has supported us. Uh, I am supporting this as a business owner because I believe in our community. I have invested in the, in the 51st Street corridor, and I think that, again, we need to take over our community. We cannot let violence and drugs take over our community. So we're going to come out. We're going to have food. Uh, we're going to have fellowship, and we are going to get to the bottom and get to the root of what is going on in our corridor at 51st in Indiana. So I welcome anyone to come out if you're in that area um, tomorrow, Saturday, between the hours of 12 to 4. All right. And uh, we have a caller on the air. Hi, Mr. Lamont. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? I am just lovely. So my question today is, with all the violence that's going on um, around your business, um, how does that affect your business, and how do you think in the future you could try to um, calm down the ruckus around your business as well? You know, I'm already doing that um, by, again, talking to, I call them the players, right? In each community, each block, each ward, you have the players. They're the same gentlemen that are hanging out in the areas, hanging out in the corners, excuse me. And so, again, you have to get out and talk to these guys. You can't be afraid to talk to the people in the community. Um, my business, um, in the beginning, suffered because I had people that continued to break into my business and laudered in front of my business. But once I, I took it in my own hands and started talking to the gentlemen in the area, they, were, they stayed at bay. They gave me the respect I needed to be able to run my business. And so I think that we need to use this example in other areas across the city to not be afraid to talk to um, the... Um, as, as we call them, the bad guys or the drug dealers or the guys that are selling the, the cigarettes or the gang members. we got to get out and talk to these guys. We cannot wait for the mayor to do it. We can't wait for our aldermen to do it or our Cook County commissioners or our state reps. We have to do it ourselves. I totally agree. Um, I want to tie that statement you just made back to, uh, well, I'm going to hold that thought. We have a caller, caller on the air. Oh, yes. I just want to commend you two guys. You're doing a great job. Um, I, I really have a question, though, um, and, and this is to both of you guys, um, and especially young man and the business owner. How important do you think community and police relationships are? Uh, how how important do you think those relationships are? And uh, what do you what do you see as uh, uh, much of the issues with young people today? Um, as a young person, what do you think, coming from a youth perspective, that adults can do to help? Um, put young people on the right path. And uh, I want to commend um, Mr. Robinson for taking the efforts of hiring young people um, and working um, with other community organizations. But I want to talk about specifically police and community relationships and what is it that young people feel that adults can do to help change their circumstances. Thank you. Um, well, in my opinion, I believe that the first thing adults can do is to uh, stop you know, making the youth seem as if they're so bad or so different than previous youth have been. Um, I believe a lot of the youth have issues and uh, different things that correspond to their lives, but the first thing we cannot do is treat them as if they're bad people or, you know, uh, someone we don't want in our community. You can always reshape the person who uh, is the drug dealer or selling the drugs or ha what have you. Um, that person can always be changed and turned into someone better just based off how the uh, adults treat the, the youth. you have anything to say? You know, Antonio, I, I would uh, agree with you 100%. And, and that's when I started the conversation out is by uh, communication. Communicating is so important. Uh, youth want to be uh, uh, listened to. Mm -hmm. um, they want to feel as though someone is understanding um, uh, the plight that they have. 
Um, and so, Antonio, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, and then also that, that the adults, um, we have to remember uh, when, we were, when we were teenagers, right, the mm -hmm. ruckus that uh, we caused. Um, and I think that we, there's a disconnect, Antonio. I think there's a disconnect, and what the caller is saying is that there's a disconnect with the adults and the youth. And I think that we need more, more adults to be able to step up. We need more mentoring programs. And so, again, we cannot police our way out of the things that are going on in Chicago. Instead of, instead of putting more police on the streets, we need to be able to invest in our, our communities, Antonio. We need to be able to invest in mentoring programs in our neighborhood that brings someone like myself with, with entrepreneurship background and also an educator to be able to teach entrepreneurship um, and talk about just, hey, taking $100 and buying a lawnmower and being mm -hmm. able to uh, 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 cut lines in your neighborhood or even uh, even cheaper than that, Antonio, is to be able to grab a shovel mm -hmm. and creating a business where you're shoveling, where you're shoveling the, the, the uh, sidewalks in your area. There are a lot of different things that we can do uh, with youth from a simple standpoint, but we got to be able to communicate, and that's something that we've lost in our neighborhood. I definitely believe that that is something that has been lost. Um, I want to piggyback on your uh, communication theory. Um, where do you think the communication is lost um, along the way between the adults and the youth? We just don't talk, Antonio. Um, you know, when we, we, we go back to a community where um, uh, my parents knew your parents and they would communicate. And, Antonio, and if they saw you getting out of line, um, they would call your parents, right? And mm -hmm. if they didn't call your parents, they would tell you, Antonio, that's not right. I grew up like that, and I think, Antonio, we have to get back where um, we are, uh, excuse me, we are, a village is raising children. It takes everybody to raise a child. Antonio, we got to get back to that. I definitely agree. Uh, we have a caller on the air. Caller? Hi, good evening. Um, I wanted to know about the event tomorrow. Is the event open for everyone? Yes, it is. It's open to everyone, uh, um, and uh, we just put that information up. Again, it's at 51st in Indiana. It is from 12 to 4 o'clock. We will have food. The aldermen will be there. Other uh, business owners will be there in the community, and we would love to have you out. So please come out. All right, so um, you reside in the Grand Boulevard area yourself. Um, I'm just curious as to what things have you seen uh, that the youth may have you know, crimes or anything of that nature that they have committed that you think could have easily been turned around by someone of authority or an adult, you know what I mean? You know, I was just talking to um, 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 the, the brother that runs the Clio, um, last name Barrett, um, his father is Reverend Barrett, and he mentioned um, on Tuesdays uh, he has opened his community center up uh, to youth. Because mm -hmm. he was realizing that on Tuesday, driving around and uh, the, the, the church, which is uh, on the corner of 55th in Indiana, uh, that he saw youth uh, in the area on Tuesdays just hanging out. And so they opened up a community center to be, to be able to bring youth in. Again, as I mentioned to you before, um, we need to have community centers. We know that there are uh, cars are getting broken into, homes are getting broken into, and these crimes are committed by youth. These crimes are committed generally um, from three to eight o'clock. And so with that said, we know that these things are happening when students get out of school. Uh, Antonio, they have nothing else to do. I and so if you have nothing else to do, and not only do you don't have anything else to do, Antonio, you're hungry. Uh, you don't have uh, you, you don't have anything to eat. You're hungry. You're destitute, and so uh, you don't mind breaking into cars. You don't mind breaking into someone someone's home. But if if we had uh, programs in the city of Chicago after school programs, um, that would keep these things at bay. Um, I definitely agree with that statement. Uh, just being a part of the youth myself, I know days that I would get out of school. And uh, I would li literally search for something to do after school, being that if you uh, were not involved in a sport or an after school program, yes. there was no guidance outside of the school. It was once dismissal arrived, it was you're on your own, you know. So um, I definitely think that more community centers need to be uh, put into place to alleviate a lot of the violence and the uh, crimes committed that you said are mostly done by the youth. Um, I mean, it can definitely all be alleviated, and definitely 
we can get rid of it. Antonio, and I would agree, and if, if you don't mind me making one point, mm -hmm. you know, my ask today is that other uh, community organizations, other churches, um, other um, um, business uh, folks open their businesses up, mm -hmm. open their churches up, open your community centers up to youth. Let's get our youth off the streets and let's create positive programs for them to have something to do. I definitely agree. Um, well, my name is Antonio Galladay and I represent the Grand Boulevard Prevention Services. Um, and you are Mr. Lamont, Lamont Robinson. Uh, 51st in Indiana is my office, uh, Insurance and Financial Services, and again, I've been in business for 10 years. That is a wonderful story. I'm glad that you joined me today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you all for tuning in, and you have a great day.